So, welcome to IoT. Welcome to the IoT class. <coughs> right, time sheet, time uh, sign in sheet. Everybody sign in. All right. Thank you so much for coming. And <coughs> this class, it will have uh, it's a little bit different than other classes. All right. Because all my life, I would like to give exams, tests, and most likely I'm not going to give you any tests in this class. Okay, in return, you're going to work 10 times harder than working for exams. Okay? Okay. So that's the deal. Let me close the door. Introduce you to IoT. What is IoT? What's end-to-end -end programming? Um, what we are expecting from you in this class? What you gonna do? Uh, first of all, uh, this class is a graduate class, graduate level class. But seniors are very welcome, undergraduate, very welcome to take this class. Uh, assuming that they have uh, some background, programming background. I almost wonder what is, are these for? How can you use them? Anybody know? Oh, we could write? It's a bit off. It's very nice. And this is supposed to be like this, right? Okay. Interesting. All right. Um, so, uh, IoT is, first of all, if you don't know me, anybody does not know me? Everybody know me? You know me? Do you know me? First time it, you see you in my class. That's because I dropped the last one. Huh? <laughs> 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 you dropped the last one? Last one? Okay, how about you? Um, you gave uh, a lecture. In okay, the then you know me. Okay, I'm, I'm uh, good. So, if you don't know me, uh, Professor Abu's name. Okay, and uh, my extension for 413. My, my email at bridgeball.edu. All right, and my office in engineering, take, I think 152, room 152. You are welcome to call, email, stop by at any time you uh, like. All right, so uh, what we are covering in this course, we're covering IoT, all right? So I know a person knows IoT very well, all right? He knows IoT, kind of. <laughs> Right. The reason for that, he published paper in RFID with me, actually as a journal, and um, it was related to security, but RFID, right? Yes, sir. And RFID is, if you consider it as part of IoT. So IoT is Internet of yes. everything. Everything. So everything means what? Everything. <laughs> everything. <laughs> means everything. So basically, look at this room in the future, the tables will be connected to the internet. The chairs will be connected to the internet. The doors, the lights, the blinders, the windows, this, that, clock, everything will have kind of IP address connected to the internet. Right? That's the future. That's the future. Why we need to have, why, why we need to do that, for many reasons, we're going to talk about it, right? We're going to talk about it and introduce uh, in a second. Uh, but that's the, the future. Uh, if you go Google, try to go Google and try to search, okay, what are the most trending technologies nowadays? You'll find some sites will give you 15, some of them tell you 17, some of them tell you 7, depends. But in all the lists, I bet you you'll find IoT, Internet of Everything or, or Internet of uh, uh, Everything, all right? Um, and that's the future, the future that everything will be connected to the internet. Um, um, if we are able to secure the communication, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't want to have your husband, not your husband, your wife, um, or your husband if you are a female, for example, uh, has a control over your diabetes device. So in the future, we're going to have a diabetes device connected to you, okay, that the doctor could monitor or whatever, but you don't want your ex to hack into it and inject you with something you don't like, right? You don't want to have your garage door 
okay, hacked into that people could get to your house, right? So we'll talk about security, we'll talk about bad methods. Anyways, before we start talking about what you are supposed to do in this class, okay? And you know, you could decide you want to stay and not more leave, okay? <laughs> but you are going to do two major projects. One of them is research project, and one of them is hands-on project. So uh, for the hands-on project, we're going to have a lab. So in here, we're going to cover a class for two and a half hours, but you're going to have another lab that you have to take, all right? And they have created a manual for lab. So basically, you're going to go to the lab. Uh, you could work in groups of twos, two people, okay? And, uh, uh, and you will be able to learn about Raspberry Pi, about Arduinos, about, you know, different experiments, introductory experiments that you'll do step by step, and you could write the code for them. So that will prepare you for that first project, or call it the second project, I don't care, which is a practical project. So you're going to come up with a project that you'll plan for it, you'll have a budget for it, You'll plan, uh, uh, design it, you'll have a, um, um, uh, um, uh, let's say, that economic or, you know, uh, um, uh, need for it, uh, uh, business plan for it, call it, we're going to talk about it in details, and you'll build it and present it at the end, all right? So I'll give you some of the examples we have done. My GA will show you one of them. Uh, when he comes, he's not here, he will be here at the end of the month. But he used RFID to create a sign-in sheet. As you see in here, for example, uh, when you every time you come to this class, what they have to present with your paper, or I could do it in the computer to sign in sheet, right? So that's it's a time-consuming, time-consuming. I don't know who signed what, so you could you could very much sign for your friend, okay, all right? Or you do whatever, right? Okay, so it's like an old-fashioned way. By the way, in Canvas, I could do it. I could call the names and sign you in, right? But again, that would consume a lot of time. So my uh, student, um, he created a system that, you know, he created an application using, I think, uh, Uno or Raspberry Pi, all right? You, you, put, you plug it to a laptop, through the computer, okay? So when, when you come, just, you put it here. As a, a professor, I put it in here. And using your UPID, when you enter, just you scan it, okay? So it will scan your ID because your ID, by the way, is out of ID. It has a chip inside it. That's why you are able to access doors. So you scan it, all right? And scan, it records the time you came in, the time you left, whatever information, and is connected over the cloud, over the cloud where? To a database, to the cloud. Okay, and could you know create all the data? So I could know exactly what time, the minute you came to the class, the time you left the class. If you attend, you did not attend. I don't need to have a paper or anything, right? Mm -hmm. So this is an IoT application. This is IoT application. The next phase he's working on integrates this with the canvas. Okay, so the canvas. So. You know, the data going to go to the cloud, the cloud will update my campus, so I don't need to do anything, all right? The next, is, the next to the next step, I don't want to bring this device, okay, or a laptop, okay? I need it to be hooked to my iPhone. I don't want to touch your phone, but I don't to touch my phone, okay? All right, so um, my phone, so, okay? So there's a serial port, so I'm going to plug, that's what you're going to work on it, just plug it in here, so I put myself on. Uh, plug it to here, and you know, you scan it in the way it doesn't want to do anything. This is IoT device, so this is an IoT device using RFID. The other application my students have done last semester, you know, last time I offered the class, is like, you know, in winter, what do you have? You have oil, they have gas now, but many people in the area have oil, right? And for the tank, all right, you have when it's like about 20%, you have to call a company to fill it out. Or usually the company, when they, they run by and they estimate, and you know, sometimes you, they give you more oil, okay, um, um, uh, than you need, or you could have the summer a lot of oil or whatever, so you don't want to worry about that. So we created a device, okay, with, I uh, think, uh, again, the Pi, all right, 
uh, where it measures the level, the level of the of the oil, and uh, the the pipe connected to Alexa, you know Alexa, Amazon Web Services, right? And a certain level, it will issue the request for oil. Okay, by itself. So okay, so this is another application. All right, another application for IoT is like monitoring your back when you travel. When you travel overseas, you come come in the GFK. You know, um, you have to finish the customs and then you go wait for the bags. The problem there's so many bags, right? You have airplane has 500 people, so many bags. So one time it happened to me that you know my bag came circulating, but I could not recognize my my bag, right? So this is one of the application that you know you, you have like you know a, a application in your uh, cell phone with RFID or whatever chip on the bag when it pass by till it's coming. All right. So think about any application. Okay. So what we are doing in here. So how many you know how many of you already realize what we are talking about? All of you, almost right. Oh, so what we are talking about. Three layers sensing. Okay, and then we have communication, and we have communication network, <coughs> and we have a cloud. Okay, so you're gonna have a system. You have a system for sensing. You need to sense the data. The data does not stay local. The, 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 the data will be connected somewhere using Wi-Fi, for example using uh, RF, using whatever, okay, wired, wireless, could be, there's no problem with that. The data will go to the cloud. The data will go to the cloud. Okay, and the cloud does two things, all right? Two things, okay? Processing in both of them. But it could be a real time, or it could be for analysis. Okay, so so for example, let's say that the sensing in here, that another system which I would like one of you to create it in, 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 in other project. Now the delivery problem, right? Let's say you buy a refrigerator, or you buy uh, uh, a carpet, or you buy a couch, or you buy uh, anything to your house, you know, from Home Depot, from anywhere. All right, so usually this kid's wallet for delivery, right? So the problem when they tell you you have a window from one to five, you have to be there or somebody alone with ID, keep your, you, you know, your pets away, you know, that instructions, right? So how about if we can create a system, which is like a camera at the door, when, when a person, you know, rings a bell, it activates a camera, this will, over the cloud, activate a signal to your iPhone, to your cell, whatever, okay? And you'll be able, at that time, to watch the person at the door. You will be able, from there, to open the door while you are watching and giving him instruction where to put it. And until he leaves, when he leaves, you know, tell him bye-bye, then you make sure the door is closed and you don't have to be there. Right? So what kind of processing we have in here? Real time. Real time, mm -hmm. real time application. All right? So this is an example for real time application. All right? Let's give you an example for analysis. All right? <coughs> so for example, you know, when you go now, all, all the stores in the future, Home Depot or uh, let's say Macy's or whatever store, everything will have a tag. RFID tag yeah. that even when you touch it, it knows somebody touched it. Okay, touched it. All right, all right. It will be able to report at the end of the day if it's still existing, existing or not existing, right in the store. All right. So l let's say that Home Depot they have like five thousand or ten thousand stores in the country. Okay, by the end of the day they could collect collect the data, and what do you do? Analysis. Then according to the analysis, they know Trend. the trends. They could know many things. They know what parts you have to order. They could know which which store which store that, that that part is much more busy, or which state or which city 
you know so for example if you have shovels in Connecticut will be very common but in Texas will be less common maybe right the simple but, but there is this is simple you don't need maybe the IT system but there is other things that will need a close look right so this is we are not creating a real-time application what we are creating analysis over a day over a week over a month over a year over a history analysis okay in all the process what we are doing collecting data big data huge data all right huge data so where is the data gonna go cloud, cloud. cloud. It doesn't have to go to the cloud it doesn't have to but it's better to go to the cloud to central place right is, my basic question is is the cloud and the a necessary ingredient in order for your project to be under IOT no it's not but that's the ultimate that's the ultimate that's you know the, the you know that's the bigger picture because if you have like um, uh, an, um, an application IoT application for one store you need to have put it in the cloud Not necessarily. No. but if you are a home depot that has 5,000 stores yeah. that's more cost effective to have it in the cloud than in individual servers because you need to analyze for the, all the data not part of the data but if it's only in one store like that as you, as you mentioned yes. is it still considered an IoT application? yes yes still yes yes all right. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you could always like, consider this is like a local cloud or no. <coughs> okay. You could know any layer, right? Okay. So IoT is not necessarily connectivity to the internet. It's just individual devices that somehow feed to one central. Well, I mean, the devices could, should maybe maybe not connect. <coughs> should not connect to the internet at all. Connect to the no local device and the device okay. connect to the internet. Sure. Okay. Gateway, like a gateway. Yeah, we, right. I'm actually working on a project like that for my employer now. Yeah. Where we're using our ID badges for printing. Yes. So in order for them to, they can literally just go in, send a job to the print queue, mm -hmm. and walk up to any of the Xerox machines that are in their building, swipe their badge, and then release their job. Excellent. Yeah. So, I, I mean, there is no, no, IoT is kind of, or M2M is like kind of new field. Yeah. So there's no strict definition for what you, you do, more than the vision. I mean, what, what common you have there is the vision. What is the vision? Connectivity. Make your life easy. <laughs> okay, easy, don't work. Collect the data. Okay, that's what the, the, the vision. Okay, there are some visions, like connectivity and all of that, but you know, all connected, okay. So basic, basically, what is the main component of IoT sensing all of the time that you have to have a sensor, right? We'll talk more details as uh, 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 as we go on. Okay, so go back. So that's the lab, right? You're gonna have a lab. We're gonna introduce you. We'll give you like uh, the the gadgets, the, the single board the processor, and uh, you'll try to um, run some programs. Etc. Etc. Okay, then you're gonna come up with your project. I just mentioned some applications for you. So I need you to be innovative. Okay, I need you to have like a business plan, innovative things. You know, I mean, I mean, somebody, for example, could suggest I would like to have uh, light controls. You just could buy it now. It's available, right? Okay, or like control of the lights from remote or something. Curtain control, whatever, temperature control remotely, whatever. I mean, this is application. You could go buy them now. They are commodity, right? It's not not a big deal, right? Think of, I mean, the idea. Usually, the idea. You know, one of the things my dad taught me. He said, you know, you know what is the most important thing when you build a house? He said, he said the material use. He said no. He said the land. He said, what do you mean? He said, you go buy, you're gonna go buy a land which worth $1 million, and you built a house worth $1 million, this is $2 million. But if you buy a land that's worth $10,000, and you build a house $1 million, this $1 million, 10000 okay? So you're gonna build the house, you have a vision, your wife has a vision, your spouse has a vision for the house, you're gonna build it anyway, right? 
But what make a value for your house is, is the land. Reflect, and here, you could have a project that you work like 200 hours to make it work, but it's not worth it, all right? Sure. Okay, the idea is not a great, all right? So you need to work a little bit on the idea first. The idea first, then you spend your 200 hours, right? Because you're spending like 200 hours in the idea that's worth it, okay? It's completely different value, has completely different value. Spending 300 hours, and in an idea that's not worth it. So somebody tells me the project is I would like to control, as I said, like the, the lights in the or the heat or the the AC of the house remotely. Uh, please don't suggest this project. It's very simple. It's it's a great thing. It's a very good thing. But you know it's already available. So think about something something that you know makes life myself because that thing is a problem. I suggested this to my students. <laughs> And I'll show you a demo. It's working very nice. Okay. It, it, once we, we we do it, it will become. I mean, I, I think we could market it very easily for schools. I mean, device 50 bucks. All right. For uh, the instructor, the university will buy for students for the faculty. Yeah. Do you think? Yeah. 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 So, uh, and so on and so forth. So the the, the 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 idea is very important. That's one side. That's a ticky side, right? That's a side you'll enjoy, okay? You enjoy. The other side that I have to make you enjoy is the research, okay? The research. So there's a lot of development. What's happening in here? Development, scientific development in the sensing. What's happening in here? Scientific development in the protocols used. Okay, what's happening in here? Development in the cloud, in the security. All related to IoT, scientific research. So you'll be required to read IEEE, ACM, high uh, impact factor, scientific papers. It's all about reading, understanding, and try to contribute something to the whole world. Okay, research, you're gonna do research. Okay? And it's again research, not search. Okay, search to search for something. Research is to find something. It's different, okay? So we'll talk in details about it later, what is, the, what is research and what you need to do. I'll try to guide you a little bit uh, to go through, through some of the, uh, the papers. And uh, So mostly we'll be reading, summarizing, co lab, coming up with, with ideas, all right? I will hold off on uh, deciding when the, the, the lab time until next week, mm -hmm. so until your schedule is clear. All right, we'll discuss it, but we're gonna have a lab, okay? All right, so this is a class is, again, I don't, I don't, I don't know, I could get you crazy and uh, ask you to do an exam, but uh, for now, I don't like, I don't feel like giving you exams. You're a graduate, you're mature, okay? I would like you to enjoy, have, you know, giving a product. Take it as a fun course, you know, to prove your engineering skills, okay? And, uh, uh, and introduce you to research. Many of you, especially like undergraduate, I see many undergrad here. Are you undergrad? Right, undergrad. And the two undergrad there. Are you undergrad? No, right. How about you? Okay. Undergrad, you are under still? Yeah. It's so many years now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long time. I took my Python class, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 that was two years. But that was that. Okay. Yeah. Two more years. Well, then he's trying to prove he's smart, so what can I do? He took Python when he was seven. Anyway, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> good, good, good. So all good. Any questions for me so far? All right. So for the lab purpose, for the project purpose, we need to divide ourselves. <coughs> Sorry. We need to connect ourselves in groups of two. Okay, no division. Okay. So you could feel free. I, I, I'll create in the canvas like a group. So you need to sign up. So every two will make a group. Sure. So you'll work together in the lab and work together in the lab, sit together in the lab. You have a lot of your work? You could. You could, yes. Uh, okay. It will be more fun usually. I, I, I myself, I believe in working in group groups, unless it's not useful for you, right? I mean, like, uh, you know, uh, anyways. So yeah, you could do it by yourself. Divide yourself and two work together. Whatever you like, you know. I'm okay with that.
All right. So uh, any questions? No questions. So let's try to. For any project, will we have uh, any specific, like people are going to be using the cloud platform? Uh, is anything like provided for us or like Google Cloud or GCP? You could you choose anything. anything. I didn't dictate anything myself. Yeah. All right. Okay. We'll give you a little bit of introduction for it, but you have to learn a lot of things on yourself. Mm -hmm. okay. so, yeah. Database. GCP. So, you know, uh, seriously, I, did, I don't like to dic dictate on the students the project they do. First of all, they have a previous knowledge with the music, right? And um, uh, uh, they could use the rest of their time in, in, in to learn something new. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, so as I told you, it's, um, So uh, maybe we already covered a lot of what we're going to talk about in here. So uh, so another example, we mentioned many examples. I'm not sure if you like, 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 like this is good? Yeah. OK. All right. So, uh, uh, so one time I invited my friends for a lunch. Um, uh, so you, you know now the, the meters, they have the coin. And some of them you could use a card, and you know you have to search for the spot, search for the spot, and you know sometimes you come late to the car, you find the ticket, you know there's always police on the bicycle, you know, um, you know coming around and trying to check, and all of that. How we, how if we automate all of these? How if, for example, we use an IoT for the whole system, right? Um, that every meter, every meter, it has a sensor that could report if there's a car parking there. And, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, it can sense when you start parking, when you park there, and sense when you leave, and could charge your credit card directly down to the minute, if you will, or if you wish, okay, without even your intervention. Also, it could, for example, part of the GPS uh, system that you have, if you have a big parking lot, could tell you where is, where is the, the, the empty spots, before you arrive there, if you are going to park, you know, somewhere to the hospital, for example, or like sometimes in here in Thursdays at UP, you cannot find a parking spot. How if we have like each parking spot has a sensor, it does not need to be big like that. It could be something in the ground, okay, that, you know, it could detect enough, and each car in the plate, for example, it could, for example, like read the plate, and from the plate could check that account, for example, or it could be any different system, just a system. Give us a system, build us a system better than, than what we have right now. Many times I take my friends to, to launch, I park the, 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 my car, I put the coins they have. We are always short of coins, right? And you know we keep going check, checking out. And the last time we forget to check, we'll, we'll come with a $30 ticket, right? Happened to you, happened to me many times. So how tough is to replace all of these systems with the IoT camera, auto charge, okay? This is, this is with the technology, with the available te technology now, it's possible, don't you think? All right, one major thing about IoT, description of IoT, they call it technology integrator. So it in integrates multiple technologies together to have one useful thing, all right? So when you look at IoT, you don't have to reinvent the cloud. You don't have to reinvent the sensing. You don't, you don't, you don't have to reinvent the communication. There's multiple ways of communication, many sensors or sensing systems, different clouds, like you mentioned. Or how you integrate the technologies together. It's a technology integrator, as we'll see. All right? So that's me, you know, checking on that. And that's what happens. <laughs> you can take it, right? <laughs> right? So, couldn't we build a system to make the life of the people easy? Of course. Okay, we could. All right. So there is multiple some systems. If you search in the web, this is like one uh, research. You know, um, uh, I found in the web. So, you know, always you could do something about it. So, what I needed to think about IoT problem 
solving. You wish to solve or find a solution for it. All right? Then after that, what do you do? Integrate multiple technologies together, and here is the solution. All right? So when it comes to the IoT, in terms of application, where is the talent? Finding the idea. It's finding the right. Finding the idea. Mm. That's it. That's the hardest part. Yeah. All right. If you have the idea, then you could find a solution for it. When it comes to the real research, there is it's deeper than that. There is a technology is available, but they are not good for IoT. Sure. Okay. I'll give you an example. Let's yeah. say that we use uh, you know what HTTP. Yes. All right. Yeah. All right. This is not useful for small sensors because there's a lot, a lot of data communicating, a lot of data transmitted and received. When you have a lot of data transmitted and received, that means what? You have a period. Power consumption. All the small devices run off battery. All right? So it's a core thing, it's a more, very important thing that always you must reduce the amount of data transmitted. Because every extra, extra pet you send means extra joules. That means shorter lifetime. Right? So there is many, and that's what we're going to go to research. When you deal with, with IoT, HTTP does not work anymore. You have to look for something else. TCP does not work anymore. They have to look for somebody else. TLS for security does not work anymore. We have to work for something else. Okay. That's very scary, right? So we have to develop certain protocols for this kind of communication. All right? We'll see that, all right? All right. <clears throat> so we'll go to always, as usual. We, we start with Wikipedia. So we need just what, what is the definition? Sorry, I mean, I know you don't like theory, but, you know, or talk, but we, what is the Internet of Things? So, Internet of, Wikimedia tells you, Internet of Things is a network of physical objects, any physical objects, okay? Or, we call them things now, any physical object, we call them things, embedded with electronics, software, sensors, and connectivity to enable it to achieve a greater value of surface by what? Key, IoT, what's the key thing? Exchange. Communication, what is communication? Exchanging data with whatever. So you exchange the data with the manufacturer, with the operator, with anything. Each thing is uniquely identified, this is another key. Now any computer connected to the internet has a unique address whether it's a Mac, IV address, whatever, right? Okay, so it has to be uniquely identified. So this table connected to, to, to the internet or this chair, you'll be able to recognize, it has, it has an ID. It has an ID that you could, okay? Think about the chairs, like for example, theater, all right? Theater, you know, you, you, know um, you need to know if this, for example, you know, what is the most, you know, common chairs used, all right? You, you know, I mean, if you have sensors in these chairs, you know, you know, for example, this is for 20, uh, 20,000 hours, or for 10,000 hours, what, or minutes, whatever it is. You could use, you could monitor it live, all right? Live, okay? Uh, you could, you know, um, you know, uh, do different things for security, you know, you, you understand? Like you have like a, the, the major conference rooms that were, you know, uh, you know, people that need security, to, you know, you monitor things, always. So how we can do that? We have to collect data. I have to collect data, all right, from that. So, so it has to be unique to identify through its embedded computer system, but it is able to interoperate within the existing internet infrastructure. So. Another key, there's a third key we're talking about. We are not going to reinvent separate network for Internet of Things. They will be part of what? The current, current intranet infrastructure. 
They will be part of the current internet infrastructure. We are not going to create a different network for that. So at the Internet of Things conference held in Zurich, and you know, we started to have really conferences named of Internet of Things. Okay, they said the term Internet of Things has come to describe a number of technologies. Remember what I said about IoT is a technology what? Integrator. Never forget this word. Number of technologies, right? And research disciplines that enable the, inter the internet to reach out into the real world of physical objects. So we're bringing the internet to where? To every object, every physical object. It's like many years ago, our goal was to bring electricity to every house. All right? Now our goal is to bring what? Internet to every object. All right? What a goal. What a goal, right? Then, uh, and here, for example, in this summit, uh, 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 by embedding short-range mobile transceivers into a wide array of additional gadgets and everyday item, we are enabling new forms of communication between people and things. So Internet of Things is communication between people and things between things and things. So things and things communicating together, and people and things are communicating together. So these different definitions. Okay? It's a new field, so you'll find you know, different definitions. So um, Kevin Ashton, who is a founder of the you know, uh, Auto ID Center in MIT, was the first to mention the idea of Internet of Things. Look at this. Again, I read it as a whole. It's a very nice description, but it will, it will. Okay. You can use the arrows too, I think. Okay. Here. Okay. Today. And, and this, please watch this, because this will, will open your eyes for your project and all of that. Today, computers and therefore the internet are almost wholly dependent on human beings for information. So for collecting the data, we're depending on what? Is that good or bad? A lot of errors, a lot of mistakes, right? So, so nearly all of the roughly 50 petabytes of data available on the internet were first captured and created by human. Captured and created by human, okay, beings. By either typing, typing, how perfect our uh, typing, right? You're collecting all these numbers and you enter them. Pressing a record button, okay? Taking a digital picture or scanning a barcode. Okay, so how much, mis errors, mistakes, by doing it ourselves, right? So the problem is people have limited time, attention and accuracy, all of which mean they are not very good at capturing data about things in the real world. If we had computers that knew everything there was to know about things using data that gathered without any help from us, we would be able to track and count everything and greatly reduce waste, loss, and cost. We are not good anymore as a human. The machine has to, we have to create the machine that replaces us. So sad. Okay, but you know, that's what it is. Okay, so we would know when things needed replacing, repairing, recalling, and whether they were fresh or that's their best. Think about like you have a fleet of cars, limousines, all right? Usually when there's a problem with the car, when you need the gas, when you need oil replacement, you, as the operator, need to, to know that. How of all of this fleet is connected to a central cloud that collect the data and give the instructions, all right? All right? Myself, for example, I have a Honda Accord. I think you have to replace the oil every 5,000. 5,000. My previous car every 3,000. I still replace it every 7,000. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
you know, no. Okay, human is, I, my wife has the Shiva suburban, I think. I think it's every 7,000 and all of that. Okay, she replaced it every 6,000 because she is my wife. They are more, more like us, right? People are different, right? So, I mean, I like this definition. Right? So, I like this definition and the goal, right? So we, we all heard about M2M, -to -M, machine to machine communication, way before internet interface. Because at that time, we did not care about connecting devices to internet, rather than connecting them together. So M2M, -to -M, machine to machine, is a broad label that can be used to describe many technologies that enable automated wire and wireless communication between mechanical and electronic devices, all right? So um, uh, it, it started from uh, telemetry technology, but you know now we don't hear a lot of, about end to end. We hear about internet of things. So examples. I mean, you. Uh, uh, I mean, like many examples or many applications will come, especially in the medical field. All right. So now, for example, uh, you know, I heard about like you know. Uh, uh, like uh, sick people, they have these devices monitored immediately by the doctors, like a 24 7. Okay, so if somebody like we have a pressure or they have open heart surgery, they have to stay in the hospital for long to monitor them. But if you have these devices, which they are, you know, connected to the cloud where the doctors can monitor or they could give flags if there's a danger, you know, keep checking your vitals, reporting it to the cloud. When your heartbeat or the blood pressure changes, the doctor will be notified. The doctor will see it's like a critical point. What he will do, will call the ambulance to your house, all right? And the house because and the ambulance because you they know that you have serious condition. They don't need to take uh, get permission. Maybe they have a key or they have a way to to get to your house, okay? To take you right away. I mean, the system gonna change. The system, the whole system, the whole gonna change, all right? It's already changing. Before, when somebody does a surgery or something in the hospital, they have to stay for a few days in the hospital. Now it's reduced, reduced, due to the insurance reasons, of course. But can you imagine what IT what can do for you? All right? You could think about, think about education. I need you to, I, I did not start thinking about this. How can IoT change the way we teach in colleges? Think one, two applications you could do in your project. Okay, think what IT can do in, in, in the health. Think about what IT can do for Trump wall. <laughs> okay, all right. Maybe we could have like electronic wall instead of physical wall. All right. Okay, so think about security in the airports. Okay, think about security in the airports, in the chips. Anywhere, think about IT anywhere in your house. Okay. Yes. Well, one question I keep going through my head every time you go through the bullet list of wonderful things that you're talking about. Yeah. There are two things: mm. security and privacy. Yes. So they're constantly ringing out in my head. Yes. For example, your 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 uh, discussion about changing the oil. Yes. Seven thousand miles versus three thousand. Yes. Well, maybe I don't want people to know that I only change my oil every 7,000 miles. Sure. But at the same time, I do want my doctor to know that I have had a heart attack and I want to be rushed to the hospital. Sure. So certain times I do want privacy, other times I don't want privacy. Sure. But in this world that you're talking about, my future car is going to have all this IoT stuff on it. Yes. And people are going to know about this stuff whether or not I, whether or not I want them to know. No. Why, why whether you want or you don't? You could opt out. You, can you opt out? Sure. Why not? I mean, like for example, now, uh, as I just told you, my wife has the Chevy, my Honda does not have that. But on a star, I think the Chevy, they have on a star, right? For flight? Like, so you could subscribe five or eight dollars, and, and so they, you could track the car and all of that. I opt out. Not because of privacy, because I don't want to pay eight pay eight dollars. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. No, but it's, he has a point because the age of, you know, things are free, but so many people are selling data. Like, you, when you sign up for something, you sure. are you know, you know, signing up for all the information that you hold. Sure, and companies are willing to be interested in that. But, so we, are to, but we are talking about two different problems. Sure. Okay. Let me. Let me. Okay. There is there is something called my problem, and there is government problem, regulations a problem, constitutional problem. Right. 
Myself, as I'm, I'm, I'm a technologist, okay, I have to make the technology available, right? Whether it's going to get be regulated by the Congress or by the government or by uh, HIPAA or CHIVA or all of these organizations, that's a different issue, not my problem, right? That's number one. Number two, you're talking about two, two different things, privacy and security, and they are different, okay? So security is, okay, pri pri privacy is something that you have the option to opt out, okay? So for, uh, like the example you mentioned, right? For example, the, the car thing. For myself, I opt out. I could right now connect my car to Chevy and they send me the messages and all of that and they could track the car where it is, right? But I opt out myself. That's a privacy. And we all should maintain our privacy. I'm a privacy person. Okay, uh, uh, but you know there is some need for sometimes to give up some of your privacy if you wish. It will not be mandatory. Security is something different. Security, the data must be secure all the time. It's not a privacy. So, for example, uh, like the example I mentioned, connect, connecting the doors of your house, okay, to IoT device, so you'll be able to lock and lock and all of that. So the data must be secure, all the data, the, 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 for example, you could have a stream for the camera, right? This has to be secure, no matter what, okay? So security has to be there all the time. Privacy, you should, you, you, you should accept to give up some of your uh, privacy if you need to use these devices. And, but again, is it your problem, my problem now, in this course? We just make the technology available. Available. Okay, and you know, and hopefully there are stupid people pay us to use our, our, our <laughs> technology, right? All right, that's, uh, they're not stupid, I mean, you know what they're yeah. saying. Yeah. But, yeah. but part of innovation is making something that is also helpful, but also is not crazy. Because in an ideal world, you can create something so cool, but if it, you know, we also have to think of great innovation, but also what if it fell into the wrong hand? You know? Sure, it's exactly like the knife, a very good knife, if it draws, it draws, or a gun, sure. or a wall, or whatever, well, in the right, in the, okay. I, I mean, there is something that you can define them precisely. Mm -hmm. There is something you can't define them precisely, right? So, and here we're talking about technology, right? So technology, and you know, it does not mean that you have a technology available that will be adopted, right? There's, yeah, you understand. But I agree with you, privacy and security, and that's how I started my class today. I said without, right? You agree with me, right? You are the most person I agree with me on this, right? Without security and privacy, all right, many of the great technologies we will have, it will not go out there. Okay, so we have to, by the way, we think that we, we have security and privacy in our Networks right now. That's not true. You know the the, 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 the cyber theft or the, the cyber crimes every year. It's in trillions of dollars, or billions of dollars. I don't know, multiple billions of dollars. Okay. All right, right? All right. Well, because there's well, there's always one factor that no matter how much security you put in place, you can never fully account for all the variables. Exactly. All right. So I mean, you know. Uh, so, uh, anyways, I agree with all of you, all respected opinions, but it's not my problem in this class. My problem in the class is uh, to provide technology available for, for, for the people after the government approval, after the legal approval. Yeah. Okay. It'll, it'll be interesting to see how far this ends up going as far as will it be very pervasive throughout every object in your home. Yeah. How far that goes would be. By the way, it's available. I mean, no, you, 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 could, you could put your all your doors, you could put all lights or your AC on the IoT. Yeah. There's a company selling that. It's available. Just do search yeah, and you could not, install it. Yeah. Uh, the, the few different uh, they call it smart homes. Yes, yeah, smart homes. Yeah. It's you, available. You can control that a lot should, of it. Actually, this comes, I think, with application for a smart home, right? You know, yeah. the, the iPhones. They are getting ready for that. By the way, Windows, Microsoft. Now you, you could download IoT Microsoft uh, my, uh, Windows. There is a Windows IoT for IoT devices. Mm. Okay, billions of dollars. Cisco and uh, Juniper and all of these are investing every year in IoT. IoT is happening. IoT is growing, well, as we'll see in here. It's not something. It's not a green thing. Billions of dollars have invested already every year by the big companies. Okay.
Microsoft IoT. You can download IoT. It's, 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 it's happening, right? So application, so you're talking about industrial automation and monitoring, like tracking, diagnosis, uh, service requests, like I just mentioned examples. Uh, regulation compliance, like worker safety, environmental monitoring, worker, why is it worker safety again? So, okay, uh, like, like, uh, like, you know, people who work in, you know, far area, deserted area, and all the, the safety. People who work for IoT, think about IoT and the mining. Okay, my, how, how that will be, you know, what will be, will be okay. Um, and environmental monitoring. Okay, again, people work in the area that, you know, the environment is a concentrate. How can you monitor that? Uh, when you go to telemedicine, it will be a big thing in telemedicine, telemedicine and health care. Uh, so you could have the body sensor. And, Oh, there's a bad yeah, that's yeah. The new right down, yeah, yeah. I think so. No? Oh. Yeah, but you remember it's not right. bad so, 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 for example, yeah. now for, for people who have like all of that, right? So now you swallow a bill with a sensor, with a camera, after eight hours go out. But while it's going out, it's just sending images of what you see inside. Okay? So, in telemedicine, it will be a big thing. Uh, telemetry, smart meters. Now, all of us having that already, right? So, like 20 years, 30 years ago, when, when somebody would like to get the reading for your electric meter or water meter, they knock in the door and they come from the outside, right? Nowadays, I was wondering myself, what, nobody comes to my house to ask for the numbers, all right? So, they drive by. No, they drive by, actually. I mean, they drive by, and when they drive, they have a device to collect all the readings. Okay, so it's seems like that. In the future, because your meter now is not connected to the internet, okay? Still, so there is some person who drive by, so drive by and, you know, uh, send a signal, the signal will be sent back, and they collect the data. That's how they do it right now. But in the future, you don't need some person to drive by. Now it will be connected to where? Well, some places do it through PLC. Or PLC, whatever, yeah. yeah. Um, is it, what is it, what you're talking about, is that like uh, passive RFID or something like that? Really? I think so. I think so. Okay, so as to tracking, this is a big, big, big thing. Every item, every item in any store, they will have it. You know, you know, the interesting one of the interesting finding is that they found, they found, you know, that not seventy-five percent percent of the people entering any store, they go to the right first. Seventy-five. <laughs> so many doors, so many stores are built that way. Yeah. Yeah. If you realize it, think of it. I'm telling you, I'm telling you what I read. Okay, why? But how do you find out? This is, maybe because it's built like this, but how did you find out? By implementing IoT system. All right? Nowadays, for example, but if we share every pants, every tie, everything would have RFID. So, so they would know so let's say this is like a pant, this is a pad. It was touched every day 50 times. How it, when it's touched because of the you know the motion or whatever, it will be recorded, it was touched. So this is like needed, keep it. But if you have pants like my pants, that you know you put them in the store and they did not move or touched for, for a whole day or a whole week, what does it mean? It Send it back. Nobody will buy it, right? So, what, what is this? IoT collecting data. The move. The move is, is just it's collecting the, the data. So, this will be the future. Nowadays, most of the items in the stores, what they have? Barcode. Barcode is a paper, you scan it. It's not RFID. RFID, there's passive and active tags, right? So, you have passive tags, right? We, we use RFID for security now only for in, in the malls, right? They didn't well, use it. And it's only on items of a certain price. High, yeah, higher price and all that. Okay, so think about fleet management, location, availability, you know, all of these things, many applications. So the paradigm shift in the whole world, okay? Is this one hour already? Yeah. Huh? Okay, let's finish the slide and we'll have a break. All right, so we're going to have any time, any place, anything. So we're going to have any time, any place, anything. Will be will be connected to the internet, 
why the internet thing is a game changer. It's a game changer for many reasons. The most important thing in my, opi in my opinion is the last one, is the technology integrator. It integrates many technologies together to make it like one product. Go back in here, so uh, it's a dynamic control of industry and daily life. Okay, improve resource slash utilization ratio. It's better relationship between human and nature. Forming an intellectual entity by integrating the human society and physical systems. Words, all words. Flexible configurations, all words. Okay, universal transport and okay. Okay, the most important thing I see it in here, the summary of all of that, in my opinion, and this is the words for this person, is a technology integrator. It's a technology integrator, okay? Which makes things so uh, okay. So IoT penetration uh, in the market, okay? It's increasing, this IoT penetration, all right? So number of connected objects expected to reach 50 billion devices by 2020. 50 billion. It's like four times, five times I'm, I'm more than people. So in 2003, the brown is the number of people. These are the connected, connected devices. <coughs> this is in 2020, this is the people, okay? And it's brown for no reason, okay? And this is our, okay, and this is, and this is the, um, uh, the connected device, and again, you know, different column for no reason. 50 billion devices, 50 billion devices, okay, expected by 2020. All right, think about it right now. Yourself, yourself, how many devices in your house connected to the internet? So, myself in my house, I have five people, five people, each one of them have a laptop. Each one of them have an iPhone, okay? Myself, I have a two desktop in my house. I have three laptops. So it's more than double. It's like three times already in my, in my house. Yeah. Okay? Uh, okay. I don't know if you got like a Fitbit or an um, Apple Watch. Apple or Watch or and all of that, okay? Of so I think myself, this is even the 50 billion is modest number. Yeah. It's a modest number. Sure. I mean, things are going big, you know, you know, okay. I mean, of course, there is part of the whole world that didn't have internet and have, you understand, that's why, but, you know, th things are changing big, big, big time. All right, so I, uh, IoT penetration is about 180 billion, so 2016 projection of the internet things, this is why they created before 2016, that's called the projection, okay. It's like about $180 billion. About $9 trillion IoT will generate nearly in annual sales by 2020. $9 trillion. $9 trillion is like $9,000 billion worldwide. Okay? 75%, three quarters of the companies that are either actively exploring IoT or are already using it, including, you know, Cisco, Juniper, Microsoft, and all of that. 75 of the big companies are using it. The impact will impact every single area of the world. All right? Smart devices, for example, in here, these are available already, right? In the, we did not talk about like smart cars, self driving cars. Okay? So IoT is a core thing, the roads. A core thing in there, right? Uh, but smart lights, uh, all of these are available already. So we'll stop in here when we'll, we'll come to talk about the community support. Let's have a break for 10 minutes, if you don't mind. Thank you so much. Yeah. <coughs> All right. So example of connected. Um, uh, so here, for example, you have distribution control system, or PNC, connected with a customer gateway. So this is like the customer size, it could have multiple of these, it will be connected through either cellular or wired or whatever RF connection to the internet. So um, the connection going to go to, for example, in here you could have a third party communication and control center. It will be connected to support and maintenance center. So the data go this way and if there is an actuation, it's going to go back. 
So think about this, for example, like a door. You know, a door, okay, detect somebody at the door. So the data is gonna go all the way to the cloud that you could access it yourself. That you'll be able to, to access it, all right? And you could send actuation back, right? To open the door or unlock the door or whatever, right? Remember that we collect the data for two purposes, for real-time applications and for uh, data analysis, right? For data uh, analysis, right? Of is course. There, is there any other type? The third type? What is the third type? I don't know, I'm asking you. Is there Both. Any, is there any other, anything else other than those two things? No, not enough. Okay. So, okay, or both. We could use it both. So it will be for data analysis and also for, uh, you know, real-time application. Okay. All right. So, for example, for example, let's talk about like the device to collect information vital, vital from a patient. So all the day you are collecting data for analysis. But once the, it's a critical value, you can have, have actuation, right? Because, like, for example, um, uh, you know. Uh, whatever, you know, uh, um, inject the patient with some medicine or something, right? All right, so the data flow, how is the data flow? So you have like, you start from data collection. That's where we start from the bottom, right? Data collection, all right? Data collection, then data transport, and from data transport, data manipulation, then information presentation. You're collecting a lot of data, but the data as a raw data, does not have a meaning. So you have to present it, like in terms of average, in terms of the mean, in terms of the mode, in terms of whatever, right? You have to process the data, You're collecting a lot of data. And then after that, you're gonna take an action. Take an action, right? Take an action. So let's take example, like collecting that, the, 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 uh, the sugar of a blood from a patient remotely, for example, so that you're collecting the data every one hour, so you're checking that sugar of blood, right? Then you transfer the data and manipulate the data in a certain format, normalize the data the same. Okay, then you process the data. You're looking at the average, you're looking at the peak, you're looking at the whatever number, and then the action, inject or not inject. Think about about you know, uh, you know uh, the application. So that is a cycle. Okay, it starts from the data. Okay, and it keeps cycling the communication system and the corporate, corporate uh, you know system. So IoT is all about data. It's all about data. So we, we start by collecting the data, then process the data. You're collecting a lot of data. It's a lot of data, you have to process it, you know? You have to, 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 then you have to display the data. The data has to have a meaning, right? So you have to present it. So then you use the data. Either we use it for real, real-time action or for analysis. Okay, real-time action or analysis. And then we have collected the data over a year or two years or three years for certain projects or certain system. What do you do after one year, two years, three years? When we don't need the data anymore, we throw it, okay? We archive it. We archive it. We work so hard to collect the data, so we have to archive it. So when you talk about archiving the data, what does it mean? Storage. Okay, serialization. You have to serialize it. You have to store it in a certain way, right? So it's, and where are you gonna serialize it? In the big servers, in the big data, right? So it's, 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 it's like, you know, then operations. So you're gonna have maintenance and support, and logistics and fulfillment, all of these are, oh, it's all about data. So when you talk about two things, two things I always like to describe IET. Number one, technology integrator. Number two, it's all about data, okay? How we collect the data and what we do with the data. That's what it is, right? <coughs> now, part of it is communication. You have to communicate the data, right? So, so, you have to study that in your projects, for example. What kind of communication you're gonna use? Wi-Fi, RF, cellular, you know? Is it LAN span, WAN span, MAN span, internet span? What does it do? So there's wireless LANs, wireless WANs, wide area networks, the networking, the RF and antenna design. So when you have a design like a device like that, IoT device, the antenna, you have to design the antenna. You cannot have, for example, a huge antenna, 
or you could if it's for industry, all right? So how are you gonna design the antenna? We're gonna talk about all this. Then you're gonna talk about the data. The data is like a, the data and how you manipulate the data and how you, okay, so you can have application servers, different application servers in the system you are building, all right? And hardware, digital analog power, you have to worry about this. So when you look at the device, this is a hardware, right? Is it collecting digital data or analog data? And what kind of power it uses? What kind of battery? What is the source for the power? You have to worry about all of that. So we'll talk about even in, in, in our lectures in the future, the casing, how to case your device, okay? One of the things, you know, one of the older projects that I done when I was doing technology, started doing technology management degree, I stopped, is like creating, that was in 2008 or something. So creating like boots, okay, <coughs> that could, for, our, for the children, that could detect the this, this child within, you know, a diameter around the house. So when, when, usually when you ask your children or your children go out to play basketball or play outside the house, you're always worried. Somebody will talk to them. So you have to watch them, all right? So I said, what if I have like a system that you have in their boots, you know, something, and you have this device at home. So while this out, they are out within, let's say, a quarter of, quarter of a mile or whatever, like you know, 100 feet or whatever, they're around the house, this device is silent, it's good. But if it starts, they go away, so beep, you know, give you like alarm that, this, that the kids are moving away from the house or all of that, right? So, you, you know, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, so what kind, you know, of communication you're going to have, you know, what kind of signal, you know, when you have, what kind of sensor you're going to have, you understand? So there's a lot of things you're going to think about when you design your system. Uh, event processing, database, and archiving, all of these are uh, needed. What are the components? Many components. Remember that we are talking about a huge system. When you create an IoT system, it's not a small system for your house that you could collect the data and the data start stays within the premises of your house. No, you're talking about like a bigger picture, right? All right. Okay. So, uh, um, so user. So you have to know uh, uh, the components, user equipment. M2M devices, gateways, LANs, WANs, surface operations and delivery units, a bit of here. So that's what it is. You, you have like, you have the side of device and gateway domain, and you have the <coughs> network domain. We'll talk about it later in different lectures, the network domain. Because once the data goes out from your device, it's gonna go to the network domain. It's gonna go to the network domain. So what you have, usually you have the user equipment, the user equipment. <coughs> okay, connected to M2M device, and it could be connected to M2M gateway. Then it's connected to the network domain. Or you could have a system without a user device, but it has the M2M device connected to the gateway. Or you could have user equipment connected to the M2M device without gateway in here, and in here without the gateway. All right, so you could have four combination here, and this is what we call it machine to machine area network. Machine to machine area network. Machine to machine area network. That's a communication area. <coughs> then after that, we're gonna go, the data is going to go to the network. To the network domain, it starts with the access network. So, for example, this is IoT device. To access the network, it uses what? Cellular communication, RF communication, right? All right, or if I'm connected with Wi-Fi, I'm using Wi-Fi access. You know the access Wi-Fi. Okay, communication makes sense, right? So what are the access networks that are many cellular, wire, fixed, wireless, RF, many others, right? All of these are ways to connect. All right. So let's say that you have an invention, your project. Okay, your project needs to connect to the internet. All right. Most of you, I'm telling you right now, they're gonna use Wi-Fi. Why? Because it's cheapest, right? But you know, in real, you know, for, for projects, right? But you know, sometimes you need to use you, you need to use cellular communication. So you have a SIM with your device, SIM, and has a number and communicate. That's right. But you know, 
which one is better to use Wi-Fi or use the, the, the cellular? Mm. Depends. No. Okay, that depends. It depends on the application, but definitely the Wi-Fi is cheaper. Okay, but because cell phone, you have to pay like ten to twenty dollars a month for the T-Mobile or whatever company you're gonna have, right? Okay, but the problem with the Wi-Fi, you cannot find, get access for Wi-Fi all the time. So what's your application? So the question is, the best way to communicate, okay, it depends on what? What you're doing. What you're doing, all right? It depends on the cost. So for example, if you, you have this nice application, let's call it application, all right? And it's gonna cost it's gonna cost the person, the customer, to buy it fifteen dollars. But you have to tell them that you have to have subscription to cell cellular network, thirty dollars a month. So now I went to fifteen to sixty-five. Okay, fifteen is one time. Even if you make it fifty one time, nobody says no. But when you tell them thirty dollars every month or twenty dollars every month, comes an issue. Yeah. All right. You're having a product. What, what's the goal? When you have an idea, you have a product. What's, a, what's your idea? What's your goal? To sell, sell. sell it. Okay? If you cannot sell it, you know. So, in our work in here, and again, I focus on this a lot in, in the next lectures, what is most important, not most important, one of the most important issues? Cost. Budget, the cost. The cost. So the cheaper, now now if you have any product less than $10, you'll sell it. I mean, for $10, $10, $10, with like 100 million people buy it, better than, you know, a $100 product with 1,000 people buy it. Right? So it's, it's so you have to, 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 to think about it. Then after that, you're going to go to the core network, and that's what we call a network management. And after that, the service managers, where you have service kind of we will talk about it, and applications, and applications. And this is like by TSI definition architecture for trying to move the slide on this. All right. All right, so when you look at the user, the user equipment in here, that we saw in the previous picture, so what does it include? Okay, application depends on the programmable logic controller. We have programmable logic controller, which is PLC. It could have environmental sensor. It could have machine vibration. I told you like the shirt. The shirt in the mall, it would like sensor. By vibration, it could know. Okay, it depends on the sensor. Fluid levels, like the gas, I told you, the oil example, I told you. Location. And location, that's a big story. This is the GPS. If it's GPS, maybe it's very expensive. If something, you know, what what kind of <coughs> location detection system you're gonna have? Control point, smart meter, you know. This is the could be anything. It could be a long list, right? Long list. So by looking at the user equipment by itself is a whole science. If you look at the sensors, so for example, inventing the sensors. So the sensors measure temperature, pressure, height, you know, position, all of that. So, and each one of them, each function of them could have like 20, 30, 100 different kinds. I mean, you could have like some of them like to measure temperature, but they're so accurate sensor. But to buy one sensor is like $100. And some of them like not so accurate. Some of them could live for so many years. Some of them, the lifespan is low. You understand? So a lot of research, a lot of invention, a lot of work needs to be done in this arena. You know, sensors and all of that, right? What I'm trying to tell you, that every line, every line you see in the PowerPoint presentation, you have a room to be part of it, to be a scholar, to be a scientist, <coughs> all right? That's what is science. What is science? Science and you know scholarship is about contribution. And you make this contribution available for everybody. Everybody will learn from it and give it to somebody else. <coughs> give the patent to somebody else and continue. You agree? All right? Let me know if you get bored, okay? All right. So I'll give you a question. All right, so, uh, so then the second part is like the MTM device. 
so that that could include hardware and software. Hardware and software. <laughs> so hardware like sensors, equipment interfaces, cellular, short range wireless modem, RF electronics, antenna. Antenna is a big issue. A big issue. We'll talk about it later. Okay, power subsystem. Of course, any device has, has to have a power. How you're feeding it, right? And packaging. Packaging, this packaging, it's one of the most important topics. We're going to talk about the whole class. How you package your product. All right? Think about what is this device? Remote, remote, remote pointer, right? So if I package it on something like that, how it will be? Okay? All right? So package it. How you package your product is a, it's a, it's a very important software. Network interface with a firewall, modern application, um, uh, API, uh, device management control, and the applications and all that. So uh, we're going to talk in detail about this stuff later. And here, just giving you an overview, by the way. So the engine devices, okay, so it runs uh, applications and service capabilities. And, you know, we'll talk about this. So part of the things, for example, registration, like your phone. When you buy a new phone, right? You put the SIM card. What is the first thing it has to do? Register on the network. Register. Registration. So you have a device. It's not a cell phone. It's this. All right? And you have a SIM card with it. What do you have to do? Registration. How are you going to do the registration? It's part of your job. Okay? It's part of your registration. Authentication. How, how is authenticated to connect? What is the security? Authentication. Authorization. Authorization, what it is authorized to do. Okay, authentication, is it authentic? And by the way, when you talk about authentication for those talk security, the authentication has to be both ways. I'll give you an example with both ways of authentication, right? So for example, you have an account with People's Bank. With People's Bank, right? So when you put your, your username and your password, who has to authenticate you? The bank, right? But you all also have to authenticate. It's, the, it's a correct page. Because somebody could send you a link. Oh, this is your people's bank account. But it's a fake one. So as a user, what do you have to do? Authenticate that you, that you are entering your data in authentic web page. So authentication always, remember this, if you're going to learn anything from me today, authentication has to be? Mutual. Mutual. Both ways. Authorization, okay, management, okay, provisioning, uh, with the network limit, so how you provision, right? So for example, in, anyways, we'll talk about in details, all right? So enter device in here, so you have, this is the device, this is the device, okay, this set is enter device. So what, what part of it will have sensors? It will have legacy communication port like serial port, for example. It could have YLAN ports, Wi-Fi, whatever, or okay, it could have other. It will have a brain. It will have a brain, a processor, right? Okay, a control processor and cellular modem communication. And will have what? Power subsystem. Battery could be. How to get the data? This is the device in here. Okay? It has all of this. Yourself, you don't need this. I'm buying this. I'm buying this. You designing this. You building this. You're putting all of these boxes in your device. So you have to decide what kind of power subsystem you're going to have. You're going to decide you're going to have a cellular or Wi Fi or what kind of communication. You have a CPU, right? CPU, the brain where you put the program, where it works. <coughs> Are you using Uno or using the Raspberry Pi or using your? Uh, you, you, uh, you embed a system, your own design, FPGA, or what? You're designing this. You're selling it. You are the person making millions of dollars later. To the point we cannot talk to you anymore. Right? Because you have money, right? All right. So we're going to talk about all of this later. So this is, for example, the device, the gateway, the network. So we're going to talk about the surface capabilities. What are the surface capabilities of the device? So in terms of application and enablement, generate communication, security, 
okay, um, uh, compensation program. I mean, like you have a device, and and the device is working through a T-Mobile or a network, right? The T-Mobile at this time what they call broker because they charge you for each communication. So how do you configure all of that, right? Okay, interworking proxy, reachability, whatever, communication selection, remote entity management, and transaction management, teleco operator exposure. All of these are surfaces. We're talking about surfaces. We don't talk about software now. We don't talk about hardware. S surfaces that your device that you are inventing, that you are making, has to deal with. So you have to have some knowledge about all of these. If you are not, if you you don't have a broker, then what's the value of this will be, for example? No, that's fine. It's not there, but it's not all of them would be no. All right. So uh, protocol stack that will come to research, as I told you. So for example, if you get a go, for example, regular web, it will use a lot ample bit rate. The devices has very low bit rate. Has to be very low bit rate. Okay, ample power. Why? Why regular has ample? Because you are connected to the power. Do you wear a power? But this is connected to where? The battery. So you have to. The power is constrained. Uh, large processing power. Why? Because it has a eight core CPU. This is does not, it has like a very small brain. Okay. So it has a processing, so that's why we could, cannot use, for example, a very strong security protocols. Why? Because we have a small processor. It's going to take forever to calculate one key, for example. Right? So lar larger, large data flow. And here you have a small data flow. Okay? Uh, near communication. Okay? Uh, uh, connectivity. This is intermittent connectivity. The, the connection not available all the time, right? Look at the protocols, and we're going to give you a whole lecture about. So, for for security, we'll use TLS, transport layer security. This will use something DTLS. We'll show you the difference later. IP4. You know what's IP4? IP4 does not work for IP. We we'll use what? Six low band. We'll explain to you what six low band later. HTTP. Everybody knows HTTP. But it's so slow. I mean, I mean, just to send one page, a lot of data communicate. We cannot work with this. We don't have the power. We don't have the capacity. It will be very slow. So we developed something called co-op. We'll explain it later. OSPF for routing. Right I mean, a whole lecture. We're going to talk a whole lecture about this, a whole lecture about that. That's in terms of the research and all that. So you know it all right now. I'm sure, I hope, I hope by now you know what are these. So if you talk security, network security, TLS, there's a protocol for security, right? Okay. IP4, everybody knows IP4. If you don't, we're going to talk about it and IP6, right? HTTP, hypertext transfer protocol, right? That's for web. Okay. OSPF is a routing right. protocol. Anybody, anybody that networks should know. So here is a comparison between TLS and uh, DTLS, okay? So this is transport layer security. This is that, <coughs> and you know what the what difference between data gram and we got, you know, uh, uh, like for example, uh, TCP and uh, UDP. Yes. Anybody knows? Yes. TCP. Anybody does not know? I'll explain it if you don't know. Huh? Repeat the question. Oh, sorry. TCP and UDP. In communication, in transport layer. There is two protocols. There is TCP and UDP. All right. So TCP, this is a connection oriented. We call it connection oriented communication. This we call it connections. Yes. All right. So this is reliable. This is reliable. This is not. Reliable. Okay, this is similar to the phone system. Phone system is similar to the mail system. All right, all right. So this is higher security than this. 
what is connection oriented is you have to have a connection first, like the phone system. So let's say when I call somebody, what I have to do? I have to dial, okay? Then the person has to respond. Then we transmit the data back and forth. So it's a connection oriented, right? It's like a phone system. The UDP is connectionless, like sending you a mail. So when I send you a mail, do, do, do I have to tell you I'm sending you a mail? No. Do I have to connect with you? No. I just send it. That's why we call it connectionless. All right. Which one is more reliable? TCP. Huh? TCP. TCP. Why? Because it's a connection oriented. So I'll give you an example. If next, if next week, if next week there is no class, so if I call you, I tell you there is no class, is it more reliable? Or is more reliable when I send you a mail? Phone call. Phone call. Why? Because I, I have to dial you. I have to make sure that you are on the other line. And then I send you the data, the information. No class. But if I write a mail for you, you could receive it. You could not receive it, right? Well, you could open it. You could not open it. I think it's liable because it makes sure that all the packages are received. In this one. In this yes, exactly. Okay, so the same thing in here, all right, transport layer is more secure, but it's so sluggish. Okay, so sluggish, slow. In IoT, we don't use, we, we sacrifice security for speed. We use data graph transport, right? So this is TCP based, but in IoT, it's UDP based, which is unreliable transport, all right? Uh, this is rely on the MAC sequence. This add explicit sequence to, to the data. Anyways, so DLT is less secure, but it's more fast. That's why we used the IUT. All right? We'll talk about it later. Also, another example, six law band. Okay? So in IUT, okay, um, and we, have, we have to have a small packet size because we don't want to transmit out the data. Low data rates. Uh, the communication, the connection will be star or mesh topology, and we need to aim for uh, low power, low processing power, uh, large device count, because we're going to have like thousands of the small devices, <coughs> right? And we could have ad hoc and uh, mobile communication and a reliable communication. For that, we have developed six low band protocol, which we're going to talk about it later in a different lecture. Uh, so yes, it's all that is just a name or is it protocol? It's a protocol. It's a protocol? Yes. No. 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 So same thing, HTTP is a sluggage. It's a big protocol that we use every day, but it's not good for small devices. We're going to use something called the call. Okay, and we're going to explain it in a different lecture. <coughs> all right? Ripple is, a, a, a Ripple is uh, for low power and loss networks. All right? And also, it's a routing protocol. We can explain it in one lecture. When we get back, come, come to it again. All right? So now, uh, for a standard, is there a standard? I mean, there's no fixed standard. People are trying to make standards for that. So one of the standards is one end to end or You could take a look at the page. And it's like there's a major <coughs> players from Japan, China, Europe, etc. You could take a look at that. All right. Um, I have a question. Yes. Early on in the lecture, you mentioned that uh, aviation or, or space systems was the genesis of the M to M, which is the precursor to IoT. Yes. But yet, during this most of this lecture, you keep mentioning M to M sure. instead of IoT. But if sure. it's a precursor to IoT, why are we still talking about it? I don't know. It's a good question. That's it's a good question. Uh, maybe because the resources I was referring, I got the information was about M to M. Okay. But nowadays, for us, it's like synonyms. They're synonyms. Yes. Okay. Okay. So it's like MGM or Internet of Things. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Uh, MGM um, is a part of the IoT. Huh? It's the fact of connecting a machine to machine. That's that's what's IoT for. Right? Sure. So I, I mean, this is like a part of IoT. IoT is the big picture. And IoT. Is one. Sure. I mean, like M to M is like machine to machine connection, whether it involves internet or, or, that, or does not involve internet. So in that sense, it's more general, right? But IoT is, is also device to device, but involves internet. So which one is general than the other? Depends on the angle of that. Well, 
but you know, for you, for us, M to M or IoT, same thing. Okay. And actually, there is some M to B, machine to people and people to M to M. Things. So it's a all right. So system level features that Internet of Things needs to support device heterogeneity. So so are the devices heterogeneous? Or homogeneous, are the same or different. So we expect that you're going to have in the Internet of Things that heterogeneous devices. How you connect them? Scalability. So, and yeah, you need to the exchange through proximity wireless technologies, energy optimized solutions. All of these are kind of research topics. You know that you have to deal with, especially the last one, energy optimized solutions. Right. So, I mean, I mean, that's what. Big search are going on even in the cell phones. How can I make the cell phones last longer? Okay, the problem is it's infinite uh, work. Why? Because you consume more power when you transmit more data, right? When you have a brighter screen, nicer screen, <coughs> right? Right, that's what you do. But every iPhone comes, it has, it has like, Brighter screen, nicer screen. It sends and transmits more faster, you know, photos and videos, and that will reduce the the battery. What I'm trying to say, if we take the battery of this phone and we put it in the old cell phones, you know, the the, the flip cell phones, so that cell phone maybe will last for two weeks. So they are improving in the batteries, but also the service they're giving to us is much more. It consumes more battery. So we're consuming more battery, but they're giving us better battery. So it's like, you know, <laughs> you know, fighting, fighting in, you know, against each other. So, okay. So all of these are issues need to be, okay. This is very important. So stages to bring IoT service to the market. It starts with the business application definition. That's what you're gonna do in your product. It's a very important slide for you. Then trial surface. So you can iterate in here until you have like the application that that you think it's viable, right? Then after that you're gonna have the implementation. So, so a lot of time you're gonna spend in here. And then implementation strategy, design, development, and functional test testing. Testing is a very important. It's a big thing testing, right? Then after regulation and certification testing, this is also a big issue. So when you have a system that uses a wireless system, it has to be regulated by the government.